With JCS Management App, you're now able to do inventory counts. At periodic intervals, inventory must be counted and valued so that inventory asset accounts on a balance sheet are verified to be worth what they claim to be. With JCM and JCS Management App, there are three processes that you will need to do. First, do an inventory snapshot in JCM. Then do inventory count in JCS Management App. Finally, perform the valuation report and update in JCM. Let's take a look at the first step, which is to run the snapshot program. Navigate to Club Inventory, Inventory Count, Snapshot Inventory. This program is where the system will take a snapshot or picture in time of the current inventory items and what their current stock levels are at the time you run the program. It is the starting point of what your counts will be based on and what your count sheets will have for information. The program will automatically run an integrity check to ensure that the quantities for each SKU match the SKU record and the inventory transaction log in Club Inventory reports inventory transaction log. If the check finds any discrepancies, it will fix them and produce an audit of the results. Note that no one should be in the Club Inventory module or updating POS while the check is running. To run the snapshot, enter or select an inventory area from the lookup list in the area field. If you've set up stock locations, then you can select which specific location you wish to snapshot or select snapshot all locations in the stock location field. If no locations are defined, the default main setting will be used. Decide how you are going to count your inventory before selecting the star counts at zero field. Since you'll be using the JCS management app to scan the items, you need to select this field. The snapshot sets the quantities on hand to zero so that these uploaded counts will be added to them to arrive at the correct figure. The other option is to leave the field unselected if you will be manually entering counts using the Club Inventory, Inventory Count, Enter Item Counts program. If you have a lot of stock that is unchanged in its level, then you will only have to enter counts for those SKUs that have changed quantity. Select OK to proceed. Next, let's take a look at how to update the count of the items on JCS Management App. To do this, you can use the Inventory Count feature. To access the features, first select the hamburger menu, then expand the Inventory drop-down. You'll see options for Inventory Lookup and Inventory Count. Let's start with Inventory Lookup. After selecting it, you'll be presented with a list of available inventory areas to your club. Choose the appropriate area and then select the Select Inventory Area button. It will bring you to the Inventory Search page. There are two ways for you to search for items. You can search by item name or SKU code by typing the item name or SKU code into the search field and then selecting the magnifying glass icon or hitting the return button on your keyboard. Alternatively, you can use your camera to scan the barcode of the item. Select the barcode icon to activate your camera, then scan the barcode of the item to search for it. You can view the details of the item such as member and retail price, unit cost, value on hand, and quantity per location. If you'd like to update the count of an item, you can use the inventory count feature. Select the hamburger menu on the top left of the app, then navigate to inventory count under the inventory menu. You'll be prompted to choose which snapshot to use. After selecting the appropriate snapshot, select the select snapshot button. There are two modes available in the inventory snapshot count, single or multiple. In single mode, you can quickly scan or search for a snapshot item and enter the count of value. In multiple mode, you can scan each snapshot item and the system will count it for you automatically. Let's take a closer look at the single mode. First, scan or search for the item. It will display the item along with the current count. To update the count, select the item to view the details then enter the new count in the new count column. Once done, select the Update Counted Quantity button. Review the change and once confirmed, select the Submit Updated Counts button. A pop-up will ask you if you're sure about the updated snapshot counts, as this action is irreversible. Select Submit to Update or the Cancel or X icon to undo the change. Next, let's take a look at the multiple mode. First, select the barcode icon to activate your camera, 
Then scan the barcodes for the items. The system will count each item for you. You will hear a beep sound each time an item is scanned, and the current count will increase accordingly. Once you've scanned all the items, select Submit Updated Counts. A pop-up will ask you if you're sure about the updated snapshot counts, as this action is irreversible. Select Submit to proceed, or the Cancel or X icon to undo the change. The last step in the inventory count process is to perform the valuation and update of your counts. To do that, navigate to Club Inventory, Inventory Count, Valuation Report, and Update. This program will update the inventory with the new counts and costs if changes were made that you have entered and clear the snapshots. If set up in a Club Inventory, Files, Inventory Areas program, it will post to the Shrinkage or Overage GL account specified in Inventory category. To run the valuation and update, Enter or select an inventory area from the lookup list in the area field. A snapshot must be present for this to be possible. Specify the sort order desired for the audit trail to be produced in a drop-down list in the In What Order field. If you set up stock locations, then you can select which location you wish to update or select Process All Locations in a Location field. If no locations are defined, the default main setting will be used. Use the option field to choose between running a prelim report or the final update. A prelim or preliminary report only must be run first and should be checked for any discrepancies. Once you're satisfied that the quantities you have entered are correct, run the report again and select final, print report and update SKUs. When running the final, Enter a date of record that will be used for updating the inventory transaction log and posting to the GL if enabled. The last fields allow you to filter the appearance of results and some of the layout of the audit report produced. Select the show variance between actual or snapshot field to add a column to the audit report showing the difference between a snapshot and the actual count quantities. Select the print SKUs with note on hand at time of snapshot field to print SKUs that had a zero quantity on a snapshot and a zero actual count. The print category summary field is enabled by default. Unselect it to suppress the printing of a summary by inventory category at the end of the audit report. Select the print category summary only field to suppress all details except for the summary by inventory category at the end of the audit report. Select the print only if variance between actual or snapshot field to print only the SKUs that had some variance between their snapshot and actual count, for example, the only ones that changed. This field is only enabled if the show variance between actual or snapshot field is selected. Then select OK to select a printer for the audit report. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more how-to videos and don't forget to subscribe.